Hello and welcome to this video. In this video, we're gonna be talking about the concept of payments on accounts, which basically means that you've received some money into your bank account and you're not quite sure what to do with it. In fact, you don't have an invoice or anything else to put against it. Or you've made a payment for something and again, you're not quite sure what to do with it. You know what the supplier is, but you don't know what it relates to yet. In both scenarios, that's what we call a payment on account and we're gonna be dealing with it today. Hello and welcome to this video. My name is Aaron Patrick. I'm a chartered accountant, a certified UK trainer with a fancy new logo, that QuickBooks chap on the internet, and also head of accounts here at Boffix. Now in today's video, we're gonna be talking about the world of payments on accounts and how you can deal with them within QuickBooks Online. So if you're ever in a scenario where you've got a payment coming in or payment going out of your bank account, and you're not 100% sure what they relate to other than the customer or supplier, well, this video is going to be designed for you. So let's have a look straight away and find out exactly how to deal with payments on account. So in this scenario, you'll see that we've been actually really good at making sure that most of our supplier invoices are already there, apart from these smaller ones like Nando's and stuff, but the big ones are already there. Look, Baker Street Accountancy, I can match. Google AdWords, I can match. And the same with customers as well, which we'll come on to. But the problem I have with this one is if I go through and look at all the items I have, I come down to staples. It's strange how in staples I don't seem to have. Now the first thing you may want to consider at this point is posting the transaction as expense. Remember the difference, if you're matching a transaction, you're saying the transaction's already in QuickBooks, but if you're posting it as an expense, then basically you're saying that you're adding the transaction directly to QuickBooks itself. Well, in this case, we don't want to be adding a brand new transaction. We know Staples is already there in some capacity. So what we want to be doing is finding match. And when I press find match and have a look, you'll notice that Staples is there, but it's not for the right amount. Now, I could go start doing the investigation now, but the simplest way for me to do this is to post this transaction. And I am going to post an expense. I'm going to keep it as staples, but I'm not going to put it to an expense category. I'm going to put it against creditors itself. And when I post against creditors, I'm not posting it as a new expense. So I'm not putting it to the profit and loss account. I'm posting it against the actual creditors amount. And when I do that one, I have to put this down to no VAT. Now, when I press add, that transaction has been added to QuickBooks in terms of it's now in there from my bank account. But if I go to my expenses and my suppliers, and I go look at staples, you'll notice at this point that I have £182.40 of basically of me posting that transaction against staples itself, against its creditor account. And I have the bill sat here and by the looks of it, it's just that I'm missing one of the bills. It seems that when I paid £182.40, I must pay for two bills at the same time, but I'm not seeing that one. Now, I can go through my records, try and find that particular bill, but if I do find it, probably the quickest thing, thing for me to do is just copy it, make sure I put the right date in, make sure I put the bill number in that represents it, and then down here, I would probably want to put an attachment in as well. Now I've saved and closed. Notice how my open amount is now down to zero, basically saying then that I've now cleared this. But I do show £182.42. And that's because both of these transactions haven't been marked as paid yet. Really straightforward though, press the make payment. Once I press make payment, it's going to give me the option to see the bills I've already put in. In this case, they're both £91.20. And it's going to put against it that expense of £182.40. Once I save and close, everything's nice and clean. I've got a zero and a zero in my open and overdue. All my transactions have now been posted and everything's been clean. And from a VAT point of view, everything's nice and clean and tidy. That payment on account, that expense that we included, that has nothing to do with VAT. We put it for no VAT, so it's not going to include anything. The VAT will only be accounted for on those bills that we created to make sure they're nice and clean and tidy. 
That's a supplier, let's look at customer. Now in this case, I've got a customer and he's paid us 770 pound. Now I'm gonna do exactly the same. In this case, the customer is called US dollar customer. And it's someone I've got to create brand new. Now, category wise, again, I'm gonna to put to debtors and no VAT. So I'm treating it exactly the same as I had done with that payment account. Now I know this invoice isn't there. I've tried to find match and everything out. So let's add this one. Go to my sales, go to my customers and look at US dollar. Now currently the US dollar customer is showing negative. And that's a big problem. I can't have a negative customer balance. Either it's money I've got to pay back to the customer or it's an invoice that I haven't actually been able to account for yet. So in this case, I have to be making sure, especially if I'm doing a year-end procedure or a quarter-end procedure for VAT, something like that, I need to be making sure that I'm representing this account properly. And in this circumstance, I need to be finding out what relates that invoice. From a VAT point of view, even though this is a dollar customer and maybe VAT is not included, but from a VAT point of view, remember that posting that deposit has no VAT consequences whatsoever. So currently, if I was to submit my VAT return, potentially I've got this wrong. That's why at this case, I need to do my investigation, find out why we received the money in the first place, and be able to post a brand new invoice to account for it as needed. That's where payment accounts becomes really powerful. Because if I run my reports now, and looked at who owes me money. You can see here, I've got quite a lot of work to do with a lot of these customers, but the one that comes out to me straight away is this very bottom one, 770 pounds negative. I should never have a negative account in here. My age debtors with summary report should never show a negative amount. If it is, that's something I need to investigate and look at. How do I fix it? Dead straightforward. I go in there, and I put in an invoice or I put in a credit note, depending on what is needed to be able to keep this account clean and tidy. And there we have it, the process of putting a payment account. The most important thing to remember is that you, when you post the transaction, you don't post it against some sort of profit and loss account, you post it against debtors and creditors. When you do it yourself, you may come up with an error message and that error message is only ever going to occur if you haven't put the customer or supplier in. Customer supplier is critical for QuickBooks to know whereabouts in the debtors and creditors it needs to go. Finally, make sure you always put this to no VAT when putting a payment account there, and that's gonna mean you're gonna have everything you need to make sure that payment account's been done correctly. Don't forget though, if you are using payment account functionality, keep an eye on that debtors and creditors account each and every quarter, year, whatever you do your analysis for, and making sure that anything that's negative is dealt with accordingly. If you need any more information about debtors and creditors or payments account, make sure you subscribe to this channel. We've already done some videos on the topic, but we've got more to come as well. So keep yourself subscribed, keep yourself up to date, and make sure that you're on top of it, all the information you need. My name's been Aaron Patrick. As always, it's been an absolute pleasure to do this video for you. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and all of that stuff to keep up to date with everything that needs to be revolving around QuickBooks Online. My name is Bill Patrick, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.